Like I just got a $330 ticket for parking in a handicapped spot. 330 bucks, ouch, who's crippled now, huh? For $330, for that kind of money, I could buy a handicapped person, have them sit in my car while I run errands all day, you know what I'm saying? Be like, don't move, dude, here's your bike helmet, don't drool on anything, I'll be back in five. $330, you kidding me? It's 330 bucks, the car's only worth 500, okay? Welcome to The Fallen State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you all so much for being with me. I do appreciate it. Remember, you can support The Fallen State by going to thefallenstate.tv slash donate or uh, click on the links in the description and support us on uh, locals.com. I thank you in advance. He is back. <laughs> he is back. From five years ago, I wow. had Sam here on the show, and Sam uh, uh, tr Tripoli. Yeah, bang. Sam Tripoli. Sam was a, a guest on the Fallen State some five years ago. He is a stand-up comedian and the host of the Ten Foil Hat, the Ten Foil Hat podcast. Yes. Thanks for coming on. Good to be back, brother. Yeah. Good to be back. Good to see you again. You, you, you look too. great. Amazing. Black you look don't amazing. crack. Amazing. Black don't crack. Black don't crack. <laughs> you just keep getting thinner and thinner. See that? Yeah. I had a birthday the other day. Congratulations. Thank you. Another another trip around the sun or yeah. another sun trip around the flat earth, whatever you believe. What do you believe the earth is flat around? Well, you know, when you find out that the heliocentric model was invented by the Jesuits, then you really question it. <laughs> so it could be anything. Yeah. It could be whatever you want to be. It could be a vortex, dude, an energy vortex, a realm. <laughs> I mean, if you're a Christian, you believe it's, um, we live under a firmament that separates right. the waters from above from below. So yeah. I'm interested in all of it. Amazing. Since last time I became Christian, dude. I was going to ask you, last time you were here, you were not a Christian. Now you are a Christian. Now I am a Christian. What happened? Just went through, had children, got sober, just started studying, you know, uh, philosophy and spirituality. So I just got to this place where it's like the closer you, it's like easy versus simple, right? Easy is like drugs, alcohol, pornography. 90 Day Fiance, and then, you know, simple as prayers, working out, helping others. And when you're getting closer to God, you're doing the simple. When you're getting farther from God, you're doing the easy. It's about taking yourself out of yourself. And just when I help others, my life seems to be better. I'm not perfect. I'm a very flawed individual. I'm not perfect, but uh, I'm trying. And so how has your life, how your life changed since becoming a Christian? Well, what I do is I try to get the low vibrational stuff out of my life. I'm trying to like quit pornography, I quit drugs, quit alcohol, quit a lot of stuff. And I just try to help others. And, you know, that's just kind of what I'm doing right now. Right on. Discovering like what Jesus' true name is. I don't know if it's Jesus. It's uh, Well, it's just it's like Jesus. there's a belief that the name Jesus is associated with Zeus and, so, and associated with a pagan god. And then it's like, Yahusha is the actual Hebrew pronunciation of the name. So it's just interesting to me. I, I'm enjoying learning the, that, the, you know, history is a lie. Yeah. So once you start to discover that, you just start to unveil all of it, unveil, you just unwrap it all. And it's just interesting to me. So that's where I am. And so you go time. to church? I don't go to church yet. I, I can't imagine you in church. I'm trying. But I'm also like, I'm trying to make, I'm thinking about making big changes in my life, about like not maybe going on the road so much. Yeah. You do my day of rest being Friday to Saturday. I'm, I'm working on a lot of stuff, a lot of changes in my life. Do you sin? Do I sin? Yeah. I'm probably. What? I'm trying not to. Do I got you? old wiring, dog. I'm, <laughs> I got some old wiring and I'm working it out. I'm trying. Again, I am not perfect. I can't walk on water. I make a lot of mistakes, but I'm trying my hardest. Progress, not perfection. Which is easy to accept, that you are a sinner 
or all your sins been wiped away? What's easier to accept? I mean, it's probably easier to accept that you're a sinner. But How about you? Which is easier for you to accept? That you are a sinner or all your sins have been wiped away, been forgiven? <sighs> That's a hard question, dude. I, I respect it. I don't, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. It's a very complex. Is it easier to accept that I'm a sinner? And by accept, what do you mean? Just live that life? What is easy, which is easier to accept? That you are a sinner or all your sins have been wiped away? Well, I know that Jesus died for our sins, right? right. So, I mean, that, that must be our sins that are taken away. And which is easier for you to accept? Um, it's easier for me to accept that I'm a sinner, but I know that the, the crucifixion, all that stuff. And so why is it easier for you to accept that you're a sinner? Because it's easier to be like... That, knowing that all your sins have been wiped away. Because, again, we're talking about a guy who is 51 years old and his thinking up until this moment. Yeah. Right? It's like yeah. old thinking versus new thinking and then old operating systems versus new operating systems. So but I'm trying right. to so make progress and I'm not perfect. I make a lot of mistakes. And so does it... Uh, imply that your thinking have been wrong all this time? I would say that, yeah. Because we're taught that way from birth, yeah. that we're a sinner, yeah. and that we're never going to be better, but Christ came and wiped away all of us. Yeah, it. I agree. So That's amazing, huh? Yeah, it's, ama it's amazing. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. So I got to ask you this before we get really get rolling. You happen to show up today on... Uh, Trump? Uh, May, May 30th, uh, 2024, and I just saw breaking news on the news channels that Donald Trump yeah. has been found guilty of all 24, 34. 34, tra all of them, dude. Who bats a thousand? On this uh, Storm of Daniels situation. Yeah. What do you th think about that? Well, I think it is, there's a lot of layers to this. I think it, it, the, the most obvious, <laughs> it seems to be uh, political... Uh, attacks on a, an opponent, right? That, from the from the Democratic side in the Democratic city seems to be a political attack. Then there's also layers, layers and layers below that, which is, are they trying to corral people into Donald Trump to get behind Donald Trump? There's layers to this. Like who knows what the real answer? On, on, on the surface, it seems like to be politically motivated to make it so Trump cannot run. And that, to me, is gross. And also, the just total disrespect for the law and just the rule of court, we just start getting into a banana republic. Yeah. Mess, huh? It's a total mess. I think... But it, things aren't getting worse. Things are just getting more obvious. Because they've That's always it. been bad, huh? What's that? They've always been worse. Yeah. We just didn't notice it. Yeah, we were sold that it's one way. So, you know, going back to the whole Jesus thing, I think, you know... People always go, why, why, why does like God allow this, this, and this to happen? And then you just discover that God isn't controlling this realm. Right. He, that he put fallen angels, Lucifer, in charge of it. And that's why things happen like that. Uh, so the, the whole point of the, what I'm trying to say is that I, I believe my heart of hearts, the rules of this reality are the occult rules. Yeah. And that someone like Jesus comes out and gives you the cheat code to get to higher vibrational levels. Do you believe that the Republicans will overreact to this and get angry and do everything that the Democrats want them to do to lock them up? Well, you know, there seems I'm to be that kind of, uh, that, you know, the whole thing with January 6th was, it, you know, you, it follows the, you know, obviously scripted, didn't happen, kidnapping of the g Michigan governor. And then the guy in the FBI that was in charge of that was brought over to January 6th. And all the footage that, it was just a giant psyop. So do you think they'll overreact, the Republicans? Uh, will the people overreact? Yeah. I do not know. Will the controlled I opposition? I hope they don't. Well, I, we'll see, dude. I mean, there's a lot of uh, controlled ops involved in all this. Yeah. Right? I... Uh... I, I know there's much more than what we see to this. Yes, much and, deeper. And one of the things that I've noticed, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, is that there is an attack upon white men, white people, period, but especially white Christian men. Yeah, 100%. And they are uh, deliberately trying to get rid of them. And this attack has been going on for a long time. 
And I think that this is just another aspect of this attack, because if you can take Donald Trump down, you can take anybody else down. It and is cultural Marxism. Yeah. That's what they're doing right here, which is the, you know, if you study the Bolsheviks and you even study the Nazis, sorry, everybody, but they were controlled opposition as well. So if you study them, uh, uh, even though they were two different uh, operating systems, but, the you know, the con cultural Marxism is, Marxism is like uh, cause uh, se wars between the sexes, uh, Empower the, the races ethnic, and everything. ethnic minorities and um, celebrate the uh, alternative lifestyles. And that's what you see happening in real time. Have you noticed that white people don't have a chance in court now? You're automatically guilty if you're white. You're going to jail. I think in high, po high profile cases that involve political people, I would say, yeah, that happens a lot. It's happening even lower than that. I know white guys who did a simple crime like what an average person would do, I mean, they're going to jail, but the other, the people of color or other things, they're yeah. not going to jail. So that that's something, if you ever get a moment, you want to watch a, a great doc, it's called The Capitalist Conspiracy, and it's about pressure from above, pressure from below, and the whole goal is to cause so much chaos that we beg for martial law. So what, yeah. they don't want you, they, what they really don't want is for you to trust your eyes, your ears, or the wisdom of your experiences. Right. And to and the, the get your, because, you know, a lot of these guys are, are, are energy vampires, and they feed off our anxiety. They want us to feel anxiety. They want us to feel like they depression. They want to have fear and stuff. Yes, and they feed off that. Yeah. So they want the rule, like if you see Boston, the mayor of Boston's like, we don't know if we should arrest <laughs> people for breaking into houses. Right. That's done on purpose yeah. to one, tell people break into houses, and two, get people so upset and that they demand for the po the authorities to come and save them. Right. And give up their God-given uh their, their God-given uh, rights. And I was on the Joe Rogan experience. It was his MMA show. And I told him, <laughs> this, all the empowerment of the, of, of the queer theory, which is not homosexuality, it's the queer theory, it's the weaponized version, that is going to start to go away. And what you're going to see is as immigration riots. And yeah. I said that about a year or so ago. And that's why all these military-age guys coming in with no women, China, Middle East, Africa, and that's going to be the next thing. And it will probably pop off around the elections. So who, who above all the people that's being controlled, uh, and even it seems to be even above our government, who is controlling this? Who is making all this happen? Well, if you ask me, it's these uh, very old banking families. Uh, the, you could call them the Babylonians, the Babylonian money magic families. Uh, there's a name for them. They're called the Black Nobility. Have you ever heard the Black Nobility? No. Yeah, nobody's ever heard the Black Nobility. That's how little they're known. There's not a rap group called Black Nobility. <laughs> you think there would be one hip hop group called Black Nobility, right? right? Nobody's called that. And they're the very old banking families that have been around for for centuries, if not thousands of years. And what do they want? Why are they? What? How much? How? What do they want? They want total 100% power. They worship dark entities. The oh. oldest gods is is Kronos, the god of time, and he's Baal, Moloch. They're all the same guy, and they they worship him. And it's it's a it's a war against God's uh, creation. That's really what's going on right now. People always want to make this about power and money, but they create all the money, they have all the power. Yeah. They shut down the, the world. It's really a spiritual war. Yeah, it It's is. us versus dark, 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 dark entities, dark, dark arts. The, the voters, the people of America, don't seem to really see what's going on. They don't, they're not like paying attention or they don't understand it's a spiritual battle, a spiritual war between good and evil, for sure. And they don't seem to know what to do, or they don't care. Or they don't. They just partying and being online and just making tape jobs and doing all these crazy stuff. But they don't see what's really happening to them. Yeah, I would agree in that. And what they've done is created like. Uh, made everybody these kind of uh, emotional monkeys, where we just kind of all react to just like things emotionally. We don't yeah. actually think so. Like, 
if you kind of take a look at like all these super democratic cities, uh, they'll never be safe because the the people emotionally react like the 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 theory of hate is more powerful than actual on the street consequences yeah. and actions. Yeah. So you know they'll they'll keep voting with their 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 hearts and not with their heads yeah. and, and keep voting in the same people because the theory of hate scares them more than actual real world consequences. Amazing. Yeah. Did uh, you, uh, speaking about Donald Trump, did you expect the, the verdict to be this or did you say he would, they would not find him guilty? I think everything's theater, dude. You know, I think at the highest levels, Trump is, plays the game with them as well. You know, I would take Trump a thousand times over yeah. any of the Democrats, but I don't think anyone's coming to save us. Uh, you know, for me, I always say, you know, I, I kind of look at like um, I kind of look at Donald Trump as Godzilla, right? Like <laughs> God's like if you study the origins of Godzilla, he messes up Tokyo, right? Yeah. <laughs> he just lights Tokyo up. But at some point, the people of Tokyo realize. There's worse monsters than Godzilla, and they kind of need Godzilla. <laughs> and that's kind of how I see Trump. He's not perfect. There are things that we could sit here and and point out that he did. He put BlackRock in charge of the Fed. You know, he's a Zionist. Uh, we he uh, Fauci giving money to Bill Gates. There's a ton of stuff. So, were you surprised at the outcome or not? Uh I don't know, man. It kind of fits into the, the whole theater of the situation, man. They were going to get him eventually. They, they kept posting up numbers. and They kept posting up these court uh, cases, and they were losing every one uh, or at least losing the outcome. And now it seems like they got him. But I don't think, it, I don't think, I don't think the, the uh, case about that he's going to owe that woman money, I don't think that's going to ha actually go through. I don't think this case is going to go through based on what – the judge's um, notes to the the orders to the jury. I don't think no. it's going to And so stand. were you surprised or not? At the that outcome? he got it? I don't know, man. I, I don't, I can say, yeah, I got, yeah. I, I, so when I was down at the pizza shop down the street and I read it, I go, I screamed, oh my God. So yeah, I, I am surprised. Oh, okay. Um, so you are father of twins, right? Yes. And, but not married? No. Not married. Are you going to marry? Marriage in my family hasn't gone very well. It's they've been uh, <laughs> nobody family. I have a girlfriend I've been with for a while. That's uh, and I always said I wish we would have gotten married so we could have gotten divorced by now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's the institution has not been. I have one family member that really worked out for so far. Uh, so I mean uh, I'm very blessed. The mother is a great mom to the kids. You want more children? She's probably going to watch this, dude. So right, let's, let's, uh, <laughs> let's not to get me in trouble here. Does she obey you? No, not at all. She doesn't? No, she's what, her own person. What is it like being... Having... I cry at night. <laughs> <laughs> I cry myself to sleep at night. I wish someone would respect me. I pay for everything. But I'm, I'm, I'm blessed oh. with kids. I'm blessed with children. I love my kids. How old are the kids now? They're four. Right on, man. Yeah. Um, uh, so you're not going to get married because nobody marriage is working. Every blue moon, you see a marriage yeah. at work. So next time you see a blue moon, somebody's marriage is working. Oh, I'm, I'm like, oh somebody's marriage works. <laughs> yeah. In respect. I'm That's married. right. Comedian has changed a lot, too. Uh, the business of community, where the people are so sensitive and they don't want you to say certain things, you can't do this, you can't do that, and a lot of people have given up being a community because they don't, they're afraid of whatever. How does that impact you? Well, um, what I would tell you is that the psyop of of cancel culture isn't as powerful as it used to be. But the stigma or the shadow in the cave of it still lingers. Yeah. Okay. So, like, when I say that cancel culture was a psyop, when you when you hear people from the left go, <laughs> cancel culture isn't real. Again, they're right, but for the wrong reasons. And the reason I say that is that cancel culture wasn't real. It was an astroturf movement 
by corporations to make it appear like this small group of blue-haired, uh, you know, wildebeest, okay, were were very powerful. Like I always said that, like, like the 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 the, the social justice warriors of the left were American ISIS, right? Yeah. They they were a well-funded fanatical group yeah. that was brought in to destabilize. They weren't actually what they, they, they appeared to be. And what would happen was they would want to make a, they, the, the, the biggest thing is that the, the, the powers that be wanted to control speech. They didn't want the masses right. speaking out against the powerful, the elites. Yeah. So they create this thing where like, you might lose everything. So that's what they did. They took out all these people. And the, before we even have a, a chance to debate whether what the person said or did was actually a cancelable offense, the corporations would come in, fire them from all these gigs, giving the illusion of power. Yeah. Right? But that's gone away because it costs them so much now. Oh. So, but within like, let's say Los Angeles, and there's people who don't agree with me, but Cancel culture is a is a haunting, let's say. It haunts people. They don't want to laugh out loud at a funny right. joke because their coworkers might be there and they'll be like, Do you see Bill laughed at that joke about <laughs> black people? Yeah. Right? And everyone yeah. would get uh get upset about it. So, you know, and I've had people try to cancel my shows over jokes and but it's it's just not where it is. And, and so you were not personally affected by all that. Oh, I was. A, I mean, friends, p meaning personally, meaning to me. Yeah. I mean, I've had venues cancel gigs on me. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, and you just find another venue. Yeah. Uh, but you know, so when you had this Netflix roast, which was great, my friends all did great on it, and I was very happy. You saw a lot of things on on the internet saying comedy's back, comedy's back. Ah. Uh, I, comedy never left. Yeah. It was always there, but oh, now okay. the corporate people can do it. But to me, that was really about like people like Netflix and HBO and all these companies that had gone super woke trying to bring people back in. Because it's not really about the money they're losing. Because right. they print the money from and the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve just does bailouts on these companies. So it's really about that you're no longer paying attention to what they're they're producing so they can't brainwash you anymore. Do you have fear? Do I, a fear of, yeah, I fear a lot. And I don't mean like, um, like fear of walking across the road or being caught in the hood at night. No, I don't, I, don't have, those, I don't have those fears. What kind of fear do you have? What type um, of fear? My fears are like, am I going to be able to take care of my kids? Am I going to be able to leave my children something? Am I going to be able to produce adults? You know, my kids are going to be, you know, functioning adults that know how to play the game of life. That Those are my fears. Oh, okay. Amazing. Thank you. And, <laughs> and where does your fear come from? Um, I don't know, like the, the, the blessings and, and the burden of, of parenthood. Uh, you know, it's like your job is t to raise wild animals and turn them into functioning adults. Right. And that's what they are. They're wild animals. Yeah. And you have to tame these wild animals <laughs> to get them to function in society. That's right. And if they, you don't, they go into society and wreck shop. And sometimes what they do, they can't come back from. And that's not, I want to give them the best advice. You know, it's like, I, I, I love my parents. I had two great parents. They gave me great advice. And I got to watch some of their behaviors. And, you know, you learn from it. Did you forgive them? Yeah, way from early. You told them? Yeah. So you went to your mother and father and said... I, I, there's nothing I, I didn't like about my mom. There's nothing for me to forgive. So you, you went to your father? Well, I, I had conversations with my father asking him why he did this. Then he told me because that's how he was raised and I understood it. So there was an understanding. And why did you forgive your mother? Because I don't know what my mother did that needs to be forgiven. She was perfect? She's human. Was she perfect? She was perfect for me. Was she perfect? I'm sure you could go through something and find something. Was she perfect? I think she could walk on water. She was perfect? Yeah. So your mo with <laughs> you, your mother yeah. made no mistakes. No mistakes. No, nothing Absolutely. she ever did. So she's the only perfect person on earth. That's it. It's crazy that so, that's my mom. So why did your father have such a, have such a hard time dealing with her? Because my dad is a savage.
And my dad had a lot of trauma in his childhood. And so your father had trauma, but your mother had none. She just was, a, she just absorbed it and became a perfect person. Really? <laughs> 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 Who were you closer to growing up, your father or mother? Um, I always say this, is that I think when you're a child, you're very close to your mother, and then you don't appreciate your father till you get older. Amazing. Uh, and because you, you don't appreciate what he, how, what he had to do to put food on the table and uh, yeah. keep the lights on. While growing up, did you see your father the way your mother saw him? Uh, I saw my father as a wonderful man that I love very much that had some flaws. And did you see him the way your mother saw him? Probably not. Not, not. And how did she see him? As a f***ing idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and what was it like knowing that she saw your father in that way? Being um, a kid and seeing that. You know, a teenager. Yeah. What was it like knowing that your father, your mother, had that impression of your father? Well, you know, it's like mom and dad. You know, we're just my mom did the best she could. My father did the best they could, and, and I just, I literally go, I'm not getting involved. At a very young age, I said that. So you never took sides. No. Amazing. I, well, you know, at a very young age, it's like I want my dad in my life. Yeah and I love him very much, and he's a very flawed man, and he made, he made a lot of great decisions, and he made a lot of bad decisions, and I saw myself starting to make some of those bad decisions, and I do believe that God put him in my life to show me what would happen if I made those decisions. And so just for the record, yeah, <laughs> because you, you might not come back for another five years. Uh, come on, bro. No. I want to be your trusty sidekick. That's right. Do you, so you, you say your mother was perfect. Perfect. She made no mistakes. I don't know of any. And so, and all the time you saw her growing up, Listen, she made no mistakes. I don't think my mother's perfect, but I also think she, she did a wonderful, wonderful job. Oh. I'm sure I could sift through and find something, but at the end of the day, I think she did the, a wonderful job under crazy circumstances to the best of her ability. Who are you? In terms of what? Who are you? Who am I? Yes. I am a guy who at a very old, at an older age has come to understand that there's more to life. Uh, and I'm just trying to be a better person. I like to talk a lot of smack on stage. I like to talk about, I like to uh, talk about personal stuff on stage. I like to talk about the elephant in the room. And I think it's important that people hear it so they know that they're not alone thinking about that stuff. And I've always believed to press against the status quo. And, and I do believe that, you know, we're battling dark entities, man. And that there's a lot of people out there that just want to play the game to try to make as much money and power. And I think that leads to very, doesn't lead to happiness. I think it all oh. eventually comes out right. in the wash. And so you told me what you do and what you believe, but who are you? I am. I, I, in, in ter who are you? Right. I don't know. who I, I mean, like, I'm just a guy. Tell so you just told me all the things you believe and what you do. Yeah. But I ask, who are you? I'm a, I, am, I am a guy who's father of two kids trying to do the best he can. I don't know what else, who does stand-up comedy. He's had a lot of success and a lot of fun But you're telling failure. me the same thing over again. What? I'm at, uh, and the question was, who are you? Not what you do. Yeah, I get it, I get it. it. I, but I don't understand the perspective that you're looking for. To, just to know who are you, not what you do, how I you I mean, think. like, I like, I like jujitsu. I like But those are learning. things you like. Yeah. But you don't know who you are. I guess I don't, I, because I don't know what, who, I am that yeah. defines me and from your perspective. No, I'm just asking. And so what is it <laughs> what, what is it like to live a life not knowing who you are? Um <laughs> well I, I don't know who I am from your perspective. 
I, I don't know have who a pers- I, am, I don't have a perspective. But you're not happy with my answer, so I don't know. You you have to tell me in which the you have to tell me in, uh, within the, the the scope of what you're looking. Oh, for. okay. I'm looking to find out who you are, and not what you do. Okay, but but what does that mean? Like it like, mean- can you give me an example of who he is or who you are? So I know, so I can I can go. Oh, okay, this is me. So you would not know who you are unless I gave you those examples. Well, you, because I told you who I am. But no, you told me what you do. If you go, say, if, if 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 someone goes, Sam, uh, authority, <laughs> God, anybody goes, who are you? I'm like, I'm a dad of two that is trying his best, and but you don't like that answer. No, that's who you, uh, what you do. I understand that. Okay. But I didn't ask what you do. I'm 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 51 year old Italian Armenian. That's Sicilian. your age. <laughs> Is it, are you both good cop and bad cop right now? <laughs> you play both of them? Do you create your own thoughts? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. I, uh, I don't. I have a soul, and I listen to it a lot. And that's why I think my show has been good for, has done very well for a very long time, is I listen to myself. And I do believe I come from a family of psychics. My, my, my Sicilian grandmother was a psychic, she'd read the tea leaves, and uh, we have a baby that sees dead people in the family, so Ooh. that's pretty cool. We have a baby that's psychic that's and scary. sees dead people, right, so. You make sure you stay away from that room. No, I love that, I love all the babies, but, <laughs> so I, I, I do have a soul, and I listen to my, I listen to what my soul tells me, and that's why I've been right on a lot of stuff that I've predicted. And do you create your own thoughts? Do I create my own thoughts? I mean, yeah, I guess my soul does. And how does how do you I am my soul. And how do you create We're your We're in these own... meat suits. <laughs> and how, how do you create your own thoughts? Energy, that's a great I think it's just energy and uh, uh, vibrations. Do you create the the, ne- the bad and the good thoughts? Yeah. And why would you create bad thoughts for yourself? Because thoughts that bring you pain. Because the the law of duality is we have light and dark in all of us. Oh. There's no just one side. It's both sides. It's like why people can look at Donald Trump and see light and dark. Because you, we see what we're looking for. And we have both of those. So both of them are true. And so are you saying that your duality create the good and the bad thoughts? Yeah. But not you? The duality of our, our spirit, yes. So the duality of your spirit yes. create bad thoughts and good thoughts. Good thoughts, yeah. I mean, and so... Why I would say bad thoughts more like mich- mischievous thoughts, like, oh, why don't you try that? Why don't you? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that, because I've learned over time. I talk to myself all the time. By the way. Do you have a past? I have the best conversations. <laughs> do you have a past? What do you mean? Do you have a past? Past lives? And past anything? I mean, I you know how they say there's ago. a you know how they say there's a past and a future. Yeah. Do you have a past and a future? That's a great question. What is time? Is time this? Is it a timeline or is it stacked on top of each other? I think it's stacked on top of each other like a book. And it's all going on at one time. And so you do have a past and a future? Yeah. And where is the past? Well, you know, it's, it's very interesting. I think that's a really great question. I don't know. I think that we, we only have right now. And you don't have tomorrow. And that is true. So why, did, why do you think you have a past or a future? Well, because I know that I went to high school in Cortland, New York in the 80s. But when that happened, it happened then. Right. And I mean, when then, right. when then a, it was over, it was over. Yeah. I mean, that could be it. So uh, why do you focus on... We only have a current present. Yeah. So why do you focus on the past or the future when it's all an illusion? Because I think we learn from the, our past. What I think can you we learn, learn from, from the history. Past? And, and that is a big part of cultural Marxism as well, is to, to completely and utterly change the data points. But how can you learn from something that doesn't exist? Because I have memories of it. And those memories come from where? My, my mind. 
in your mind. My hard drive, which I wish I could just pull some and just like it was a computer and just full, pull some of the files right to the trash. I have too many files in my head. I'd like to get rid of a bunch. Do you want to get rid of them? I, yeah, there's some useless ones, yeah. You want me to tell you how to? How? Don't believe into them at all. Don't, don't think about them? Let them all just pass. I'm down with that. Because it, it's not you, it's your father, the devil, that bring them to your mind to keep you in the past or the future, which doesn't exist, to keep you away from the present with God right here, right I now. I respect that. I think that's all we have is the present. The all we have right now. Yeah, I agree with that. So there's no time. I think time is an illusion. We just have the time clock to function on the earth. Yeah. But time is an illusion. The year, nobody really knows the real year. They think they made up a thousand years. Yeah. And now, a word from our sponsor. Do you have anger? All the time. I'm Armenian. <laughs> you Armenian? Yeah, I go zero the felony very quickly. Really? And that's a big part of just like breathing and like not necessarily, not necessarily knowing that I am not my thoughts. Yeah. Uh, is anger of God or of evil? I mean, there's a lot of anger in the Bible, right? There's a lot of times people get pretty angry. I mean, is anger of God or of evil? Man, that's a great question. I, uh, I don't know if it's good or evil. I think it's just a reaction. It has to be a reaction to something. I think it's a reaction to the situation. And so do you believe that it's of God or evil? Well, I think, I think we all have God in us, and these are reactions to situations. So I don't know if, if it's God when, um, when you, you get in a car crash and you're angry that you got a car crash. I don't know where God, if that's necessarily God, but I don't know what the answer to that is. I wish I did. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, do you have perfect peace? No. Do you believe it's possible to have perfect peace right here on earth? If you, if you work really hard on yourself, yeah. I think you could get to a point where you could forgive yourself from some of the things that you think you did in the past. Right. And have you ever done anything wrong? Yeah, of course. You have done things wrong. Yeah, then in the and past we, I probably wasn't like, I, I, now today I look back and go, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And what made you do it? Uh, I was, uh, I was in, the, in the easy. I was into the drug abuse, you know, drugs. Not healthy. We're doing drugs. And Maybe, so were you uh, influenced? Did you ever do drugs? Were you influenced? I did pot for a minute in my early 20s, and I only did it because my friends were doing it, Right. but I never was comfortable doing it because I can, if I was high of pot, I wouldn't know what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, I'm I wasn't weak. aware I of myself. I get too paranoid. Yeah. I get paranoid so that the I government's <laughs> coming. And horny, which is a weird combo. What? Uh, paranoid and horny, it's a weird combo. And hungry. Uh, horny, hungry, and paranoid. <laughs> weird way to go through life. <laughs> That's right. Um, should a man marry an educated woman? Do educated women make for good wives and mothers? I think they can. The, the question becomes, so we're having a real population problem right now. Populations are dropping significantly in like Asia, they're dropping, yeah. Japan, China, and in America. Yeah. And, uh... So do educated women make for good wives and mothers? I think they can, yeah. But do they? I, th I think they can. But do they? I, 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 don't, I, I guess it would have to be an in, uh, uh, individual 
uh, account, each person. But do they? Uh, yes. They do? Yeah. you never seen it. Why do you think you do? Why, what are you talking about? you never seen an educated woman that made for a good wife and a mother. I know a couple what? that are like love their husbands and love being moms. And they're educated? Now listen, yeah. Uh -uh. But the, the, the truth is... I it's bet like, you that husband catching the blues. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's possible. <laughs> no, I mean, he is. You know? You can bank on it. It's possible. So, so you think only illiterate women are good in, at good moms? <laughs> Is that what you think? I know for a fact that educated women do not make for good hus wives and mothers because they think they are equal to men, and they rather be out working and acting like a man than to raise your children for you. Well, that, that's because they're, they they have been brainwashed. No, because they've been educated. Which is part of the brain. The yeah. question becomes, what what are they being taught? Yeah. Do you have kids? Yeah. Do you have any daughters? Granddaughter. Do you want her not to be educated? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. Dude. Yeah. Thank you. She would, for for my grand grandson-in-law, she would make for a better wife if she was not educated. Like get, like what education level would you say? High school is okay. Okay. That's about it. All right. That's it. And then she learned how to cook, sew, earn, keep the kids fed, watch over your children while you're away, and don't try to be equal to you, but be happy to be in a wife and a mother, being a woman, and just doing what women do. Well, I... I, I that makes sense? Yeah. I mean, I, I would say it's a yin and a yang. What's a yin and a yang? A yin and a yang, it's a, uh, it's a duality, like the male and female, different roles. Not one is superior or inferior to the other, but both have a role that they do together. But men are the head of women. What? Men are the head of women. I, 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 I have a couple women in my life would thoroughly disagree. Right. That's because they, they, they're equal to men. So do you disagree that women that men are the head of women? Uh, here's my opinion. I think that men make the rules of business, women make the rules of society, and I think within a household, men go out, make the money, and women basically build the nest. So do you believe that men are the head of women? I don't know if it's the head of women. I think it's a team. And so do you believe that men are the head of women? <laughs> I think if you say the same thing a thousand different ways, <laughs> I'm going to give you the exact same answer, which is I don't think it, I think I think it's um, I, I think people have to work together in different ways. And if if we don't fulfill roles, then the thing doesn't work. Right. And do you believe that? Men are the head of women. I don't think they're the head of women. You do not. I think there are roles. And so, if I can prove to you that men are the head of women, yes. would you, are you willing to accept that if you can see it? <laughs> I will. I will accept that here, and then I will leave here, and I will not tell my women in my life that I believe that. But I will <laughs> accept it from you. Have you heard of the order of God? No. Let me hear it. God in Christ. Christ over man. Man over woman, and woman over children. Do you believe in that order? <sighs> I, I believe in it, but I'm okay with not giving labels. So why have you? Why are you okay with not label something that God created? Because someone's gonna see this video and it's gonna cause me a lot of chaos. <laughs> <laughs> someone's gonna see this, play it, and just never let me live it down. Really. Yeah. And why does that concern you? See, when it comes to women, what I tell my male friends, especially younger ones, pick your battles. Pick your battles. But which is more important to you, to you, the order of God or will someone else disagree with that order? Just because women disagree with it, which is more important to you, the order of God or what women, listen, think, bro, or what I, women I, listen, think about it. I would love to run everything. Nobody's listening to me. But I would love to go with it, your, your plan. So if I can... That's not my plan. If they tell me I got to sleep on the couch, can I call you? Yeah. 
and be like, hey, talk to him. You know what I tell you to tell her? Yeah. If you don't like it, you get out. You sleep on the couch, I'm staying in my room. Okay. Why not do that? Because it never ends well. And? Because the cops it, show up and then you go to jail. No, you call the cops. Then cop. you're sleeping on a bunk. I know, but call, you call the cop first to have her arrested. And then they show up, they take you every time. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, le that's free legal advice, bro. I know it is. I'm giving you free legal advice. Yeah. And so you're afraid to stand up against the woman because of the cop may come? <laughs> Because I I feel that there are there are battles to be won and there's things that I just let go. Well, which is more important to you, to follow the order of God or have to pay a price for following the order of God? Uh, I think it's more important to follow the order of God. So why would you be afraid of the cops showing up there? Well, or because concern. I I love God. Uh, I don't know if he'll be my lawyer when I go to trial. <laughs> Amazing. Were, were women created to lead or to follow? I think women were created to run the nest while men go out and, and provide. And so were women created to lead or to follow? <laughs> this, is, this is great. Um, what? I What's think, great? I love that you ask, keep asking this question. Uh -oh. um, I believe that women are, I believe it's just relationships, dude. And so were women created to lead or to follow? I think they were created to lead the family. You, you, you say that they lead were created? Lead the children. Really? And take care of the family. So do you, you believe that they were created to lead? Lead to, to be the nurturers. So you don't believe in the order of God there? I, I do believe in the order of God. And so if you have to you believe in applied God and Christ, Christ and man, man over woman over Yeah, children. I mean, I would love so that. So how can you believe I'm going to tell my girlfriend that today. <laughs> and how can you believe that they were created to lead and lead, and lead the order well, of God? Well, they lead that the they children were, in your that order? they were created. Aren't they lead the children? Only if they listen to the, the husband, the father. I think they do um, sometimes. I think it's possible. I think everybody's... When the individual. last time you've seen that? What? When the last time you've seen that? I've never seen it. Yeah. Nobody listens to but me. But yeah, you believe it's possible. I think it... I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm the optimist, dude. Do women have love? Yeah. And where do they get it from? Their heart. What? Their heart. But nobody have love in their heart. I, I think everyone has love in their heart. Why do when you I think? see my kids, my heart fills over with love. And so when God said the heart is wicked and that it should not be trusted. You don't believe that? Well, I think what he's saying is don't, don't act emotionally. No, he said that the heart is wicked. Right, right. You I, believe that? I think it's possible. Do you believe it? Do I believe the heart is wicked? Yeah. I mean, I think it could be emotional, yes. Do you believe it's wicked? I don't know what the definition is. Evil, it. evil. Evil, the heart is evil. Yeah. I don't think the heart is evil. So God lied about that? No, I don't know. I, I also I don't know how to interpret that. I oh, would have okay. to sit down and interpret it. <laughs> you know? I mean, I also know that they've completely and utterly they've rewritten the Bible. Who? They did. They've oh, rewritten they... the Bible. Do you know who owns the King James Bible? Yeah. Who? The Jews. No. Nope. Oh, who? The royal family. Nice. They own rights to it. Yeah, I'll just play about the Jews. <laughs> they own the tour. <laughs> So uh, God said that do not trust an angry person. Yeah, that, I agree with that. That an angry person is a murderer. Yeah. And cannot be trusted. Yeah. Right? And so you say you have anger. Why not let your anger go so you can be free of that? I try. You try? Yeah. I try huh. to look at myself and my role and stuff and let stuff go, forgive people, pray for them all the time. And, but why not let the anger go? What is preventing you? I think you that's from, the process of letting is, the anger go. What is preventing you from just dropping it? Of dropping the anger? Yeah. Is just the recognition that it's causing me emotional anger and to realize that I have to let it go. Are you angry? Are you, are you your anger? 
I don't believe you're your emotions. You're not your anger. No. And when I always say this in recovery. You are the sky. Your, your emotions is the weather. This too shall pass. Are emotions necessary? I don't know if they're necessary, but they happen. Are they necessary, though? I think they happen. I mean, what are we, AI robots? <laughs> so beep, they, boop, beep, boop, boop. Are, are they necessary? I mean, I think, um, I don't, I think emotions can, can clou cloud your brain, but this is the nature of, 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 of digesting information. And so are emotions necessary? I don't know if they're necessary. Uh, I guess to get, I guess, I don't know how something that happens is either necessary or not necessary. I don't know how to explain that. It's just a reaction to a situation, positive or negative. So if I'm understanding you correctly, you're saying you don't know if emotions are necessary or not? I don't know if their emotions are necessary. I think emotions can get in the way of things if you don't learn how to manage them. And so, so you don't know if they're necessary. You just know that they can get in the way of things. Yes. Well, okay. And so if they were necessary, would they get in, in the way of things? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. I mean, like, the, the, the masters always learn to control their emotions and not get emotional. So that's, that's, that's really it. Do you get emotional sometimes? All the time. <laughs> All the time. And do you know that that came from your mother? I don't know. You become like what you're angry at. When you became angry at, as a little kid, yeah. you became like your mother. You Possibly. Were, I mean, and so I, why not forgive her so God can forgive you and take away the I spirit? I forgive my mother. And take away the spirit of anger. Okay. God, please take care. Please take away the spirit of anger. But you got to forgive your mother. I did. I just did. You talk a lot about conspiracy theory on, on your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, were you aware or are you aware that the civil rights movement was the worst thing that ever happened to the blacks? Well, I find that it was hijacked, yes. And do you see that it was the worst thing that ever happened to the blacks? Well, you know, it's my theory that culture is not your friend. Right. What people believe heritage, what they want to believe, what they, they believe culture is their heritage, and it's not. It's two totally different things. Yeah. Culture is usually manufactured by intelligence agencies to bring people farther from God. And what's wrong with the blacks? What's wrong with the blacks? I love the blacks, bro. The blacks are great. <laughs> what do you think's wrong with the blacks? I'm asking you, what are wrong with, what's wrong with the blacks? I don't know what's wrong with the blacks. Well, I, I love the blacks. Do you ever wonder what's wrong with them? <laughs> I love them. They're great. But do you ever wonder what's wrong with them? Well, what I want to tell you about black society is that they, they have been manipulated at such a large level, almost every aspect. Uh, you know, the story of slavery isn't what it was. Right. They were already here, they're called Moors. I was here, I'm a Moor. My mother is, my, my grandmother is part Sicilian, which is part Moor, right. you know? So the story of slavery, not that slaves didn't come on ships, but they were already here. That's a whole lie. And black people own slaves, too. Black yeah. people own slaves, Native Americans, yeah. indigenous own slaves. Everybody owns slaves. So you have figured out what's wrong with the blacks. The blacks have been the, have been the, uh, they've, they felt the blunt force of PSYOP after PSYOP after PSYOP. And when you try to tell them what's wrong with I would with, love to. They won't listen to me. I'm going to ask, when you try to tell them what's wrong with them, they don't accept it? Or they don't listen, or they don't want to hear it, or what? I think, I mean, everything's on an individual basis, right? I mean, like, some want to hear it from me, some don't. <laughs> some don't. Some want to fight me. Yeah. Why are white people so afraid of the blacks? You know, it's so funny. I got in, pro I got in trouble for a pronoun joke I do, and I got threatened with a lot of violence for it, which made me laugh, which is along the lines of this, Ryan Long sketch that he made about how woke and racist meet in the same place. Yeah. Right? Yep. 
It's like, you know, it's like, so I did this joke. It's a pronoun joke. And I had a lot of black people not happy with me about it. And they were all like, do that in all black room. I go, why? What would happen? And I know what they were inf- insinuating, <laughs> that violence was going to happen, yeah. which is hilarious because that's what a racist would say would happen, right? right. So this woke person has ra- and this racist person have the same exact thoughts about what would happen to my pronoun joke. What a mess. It's, a, it's crazy. What are the the- uh, conspiracy theorists saying about the war in Israel? Well, I mean, it's, it's very deep. It's like October 7th isn't what we were told. It's not. You said it's not? No. What was it? Well, the day before, 24 hours before the concert happened, they moved the concert closer to the, to the uh, border. And then uh, a bunch of Israelis shorted a Israeli EFT MSCI or MCISI just like they did in nine, just like people did on 9/11, okay. Uh, the IDF, by their own admissions, a lot of uh, friendly fire, causing a lot of death and destruction. Where did you get that information from? Deep research. Is that just conspiracy theories? Well, I don't know if you know this, but conspiracy theories are sto- are true story six months from now. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. And so you got that information from deep research. Deep research, yes. And where did you get the deep, I mean, deep research, where, where did you well, find the deep research? Well, there's people who's like, look, after, after 9-11, there was a commission which stated that people had shorted the flight, the, the, the airlines on the 9-11. They shorted it uh, to make millions of dollars. And people shorted this Israeli EFT for millions of dollars as well. Really? Yeah. Do you, so you can't tell me where you got it from, SF or you got it I mean, it I've had, deep, I've had, I, I do, do a conspiracy t- podcast. I guess I'll ask you, do you talk yeah. about that on your yes, podcast? Yes, oh, okay. yes, yes, Good. So y'all can go to this podcast and hear <laughs> deep theory. <dude. laughs> can I ask you something? Yeah. Why did Vietnam happen? They wanted more money and power. Okay. But the, the kickoff of Vietnam was what? I don't know. The Gulf of Tonkin. Did the Gulf of Tonkin happen? I don't know what that is. The answer is no. I was too it young to pay attention to it. it was told, what was we the Gulf told, of Tonkin? What? The what? Gulf of Tonkin was what kicked off the Vietnam War. And later on, they said it was completely made up. Well, I know all these wars and stuff are made up. Yeah, they would start off false flags. Right. Almost every single one of them, yeah. dude, are started off false flags. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. There's a history to this. And when you study this stuff enough, okay, when you study it enough, you start to see the playbook happen. Mm. And, you know, I mean, you already have the Israeli government selling land rights, oil rights. Amazing. To place it, amazing, that they don't even <laughs> know. You know what I'm saying? Do, uh, are you surprised to hear the uh, Allah U Abba people shouting death to America in America? I mean, that falls under free speech. I, but but you, I, I, I don't agree with it at all. Are but, you surprised to hear them know, chanting dude. death to America but in America? I agree with that. But what, we you also agree have to, to take death a look. to America? I, I agree with what you're saying. Are you surprised to hear them chanting death to America in America? Uh, no, I'm not surprised. It's should a that, melting pot, and should including that be allowed? some crazy people. Should that be allowed? I mean, it's the, fir- it's the First Amendment. The, but these people are not even citizens of our country, and they hate America, they hate Israel, they hate America. They say we're the, big, right. we're the uh, right. infidels and right. America the big Satan and Israel the little Satan. Should they be allowed as foreigners in our country, non-citizens, to be shouted deaf to America in our country? Um, I don't believe that. I, I mean, they're here. Do they get the First Amendment? That's an interesting question. They don't. Then the answer would be no. Should so? Are you, so you're saying no? They should not be allowed right. to chant "Death right. to America." Right. Are you surprised? What scares to see you more? Are you those, su- those people saying that or dual citizenship in in our politics? What scares you more? The people that are not citizens of a country. Are uh, so we saying, have citizens not c- and saying and saying "Death to America." Or and because those people will eventually put a belt on. Okay. And pretend they have a big pants. 
and you going down. Okay. Because they think that we so are. So you don't, you don't see an issue with dual citizenship, people voting for the interests of another but country. But you ask me which scares me more, concerns me more. What concerns me more is a non-citizens that think we are infidels, worthy yeah. of death, right. and you can do whatever you can to right. take them out, chanting death to America in America. Do you think 9-11... I will ship them back to their country so fast and make their heads swim. I have swim. no problems with that. Do you agree with but that? You don't, you don't have a problem with people who have, might have interests of another country voting on bills for funding that other country in which that funding comes back and might have blowback for your own country? You don't have a problem with that? I, I, I'm not, like, real aware of it. I have yeah. heard that kind of okay. stuff, but I don't, I'm not up on it. Right, so. I understand that. But, but I, I do that. agree that if you are a citizen of America... Well, you're from another country, right. heard, America should always be first. Well, okay, so now we're on to something, okay? Do you think that a foreign lobby should be allowed? No. Okay, so yeah, that's I what we're I don't think talking. foreigners should be allowed in our government, period. Respect, and the, you know? Only American citizens who are born here should be allowed to participate in our government. Respect on that. I think it should be, you should only be an American citizen in our government. That's right. Are you going to celebrate um, uh, white history with us next month? Yes. July? You know I about will. it, right? Yes. But yeah. the question is, am I white? I'm Italian, Armenian, and Sicilian. But, uh, but you look white. Then I'm in. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. Let me, let me celebrate. I thought Italian So works. you're going to do... Oh, so you're taking Gay Pride Month and making it White Pride Month? July, not June. Okay, okay, okay. Respect. Every, we've been celebrating. I started White History Month Six years ago. I love it. And this is coming out of a seven Is it going to be a parade? A parade. We tried to get, hopefully, Donald Trump would get in there, and we're going to make it a national holiday. I respect that. All that stuff. I respect that. And Italians are considered white, yes. right? Yes. Right. Armenians, according to Eleanor Kerrigan, my friend, is not white, even though we are from the Caucasus Mountains. <laughs> Does does uh, racism exist? Yes. Racism exists? Well, I mean, there's some, I mean, you, you were asking me what's up with black people. I mean, that, mean, that is a race, right? Do you believe that racism exists? I, I think racism does exist. Whether, and, and whether is, racism is something that should be like that people, like racism to, like getting rid of racism to me is like climate change. It's just like there's no real uh, goal line, it just keeps moving, and we just, it's, how are we going to get people to, everyone to be on the same page? Because of uh, time running out here, where's your proof that racism exists? Um, I would tell you probably uh, early crack laws. Uh, the cracker? B crack laws. Oh, what's a crack law? So in the 80s, obviously, we knew about crack laws, and crack, oh, uh, I nugget of crack about. would be the same the same How is that racism, though? Well, because, because the people who were smuggling in the crack, was selling the crack, were the same people that were, were uh, enforcing the crack laws and owning the prisons. And the crack was predominantly in poor neighborhoods of black. But did they make the blacks take the crack? Well, I mean... Did but, they take them No, as... but it's the same, it's the same drug but did as they cocaine. Make, but did they make them take the crack? But if you go, this, this same drug over here is treated much worse than this drug over here, and they're the same drugs, that seems a little weird to Did me. Did they make them take the crack? No. And so how does racism exist then if they didn't make them take the crack? Well, because they flooded the areas of predominantly black neighborhoods. But still, they crack. can't make you. Let's say you're right. walking down the road right. and crack is everywhere. You're walking if on you crack. you got rid of all the illegal drugs, your, the U.S. economy would crash. $50 billion is spent on Wall Street. But you still didn't give me racism. Because a, a law, listen, there are laws that are um, sexist. There's laws that, like, are, 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 there's no laws that protect white males. But you still didn't tell me where racism is. It proof that racism is this. Well, I, I would tell you if a law predominantly is meant to affect a certain demographic. You still didn't tell that, could be that would be a racist. wrong law, but I don't see that as racism. Well, you know, you know, I mean, if you're flooding a certain area with crack cocaine 
and treating it different than regular But they're regular not cocaine. making you take the crack. Well, that's that's a totally different thing. Whether right, they so take the if you were racist, not, wouldn't they be making them take the crack? Uh, well, no, the racism would be the the penalty for the drug. How's that? Because if you if you, that would if be you a know bad a, law. Demogra- a demographic of a certain listen listen, I, I, what's wrong with them? I, that I just want to say crack. that I, I think people need to take control of their life, and they they are where they are based on the actions they take. Absolutely. And, and, the, and the, the the decisions they made, the actions they take. You are where you are based on that. And so, okay. And, and nobody should be blamed but you. Right. As an right. adult. But, but the enforcement of the law was geared to cripple certain community. It's just know, the way it is, dude. That's it. they had a horrible law like that, and I'm yeah. not saying they didn't. But if you didn't take the crack, would the law work? No. Right. I get what you're saying, but that's a more of an individual thing. I understand what you're saying. That would be an instance I said that there could be racism based on knowing that this demographic t- Look, is going to do this. I don't know if you want a hug or a high five, but I, I'm in. I, I rest my case. I, I, I get it. I mean, you are. You it's up to you to, whether you do the drugs, but the does the, the God, law itself does is God, geared towards a certain race. Does God say that racism exists? What? God. Does he say racism exists? Uh, no. And so why do you say it then? Well, I, I, think, I don't know if everybody follows God's laws. But you do. Yeah, I do. And so you lead the way for those who can't see. Well, I don't. I don't. I, I, I love everybody. So everybody no, I'm should saying live You lives. lead the way. God said our battle is a spiritual battle. Yeah. It's a warfare between yeah. good and evil. I got you. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah. But against spirits and principles. Yeah, I agree So with why that. don't you say what God say well, instead right. of saying racism is this? Uh, well, because I've seen laws. I mean, like, when they... Listen, I agree with you. That's a bad law. Yeah, I, that's but all that I'm doesn't saying. mean racism is this. Uh, you got to ask, what's the intention? To control somebody else. Right. So that still doesn't mean racism is this. I mean, okay. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm not. I, I'm not going to die on this hill. But I just say, if you know that, if you're flooding a neighborhood with a cheap drug, a bad law. It's a bad law. But not racism. But the intent what is the intention? To control. Control a population in this area. To control, but that's not racism. I understand what you're saying. What am I saying? You're say, you're trying to say the law. I'm that, not trying to say it. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> what is dinner like? What is dinner? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean I get it. I gotta put you on the hot seat. Uh, uh, this hasn't been a hot seat. <laughs> this has been regular, regular temperature seat. Yes. Okay, go on. And so I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Okay. The hot seat. What is a man? Uh, it's a it's a guy. Do we need more white babies? We need yes. We need more babies. No, do we need more white babies? Sure. I mean, yeah, I'd like more babies. Do we need more white babies? Yeah, why not? Uh, did Big Mama Michelle Obama eat up all the ribs? I don't know. She's hung like a horse, though. <laughs> what? What? what is love? Just a chemical feel. True or false, abortion is worse than slavery. <sighs> That's a, we've already, we discussed this last time. True or false, abortion is worse than slavery. Ooh. I, 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 I believe children are a gift from God. That's all I'll say. I'm sorry? I, children are a gift from God. So true or false, is abortion worse than slavery? I think if you're pregnant, you should have the kid. The, true or false, is abortion worse than slavery? <laughs> I think... Children are a blessing, and I don't think you should enslave another human being. So both are pretty. Bad. But I didn't ask either one of those. I, I, I can't give you an true answer. True or false? I'll take an L on that one. I'm sorry. They're they're both they're both uh, destructive. True or false? Is abortion worse than slavery? It's a, it's 
It's dangerous. True or false? Is abortion worse than slavery? Uh, well, for sure. Why not? There we go. True or false? Is abortion worse than slavery? Uh, I said. I said sure. Uh, did you take the jab? No. What is love? Chemical reaction. Does a chicken have lips? No. Is Joe Biden the worst president you have ever seen? No. Would you, well, I've seen yes. Woodrow Wilson. Well, Clinton's a big close one. <laughs> Clinton's really close. Are you voting for the Great White Hope this summer, twenty-four? I don't know if I could vote for any uh, two-party candidates. LeBron, LeBron James or Michael Jordan? Oh, Michael Jordan all day. Is America the best country on this side of heaven? I I love it. Should a man be allowed to play? To, should men be allowed to play in women's sports? No. Should women be allowed to play in men's sport? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> was Jesus white or black? He was Middle Eastern. True or, true or false? Sending your kids to a public school today is child abuse. Uh, I think the I think there is a lot to that. My kids go to a private school. Right on. Because I don't want them to grow up trans. <laughs> Did you have fun? I had a great time. Thank you, man. Anytime, buddy. I I, I hope it's not another five years. Right, me too. It won't be that long. Okay. <laughs> nice. Thank you for taking the hot seat. Tell the folks how to get your webcast, your podcast, I mean, Just and everything that you want to put go out. Go to samtriplee.com. It has all my podcasts. I, my podcasts are Tim Fall, I have with Sam Tripoli, Broken Simulation, uh, Deep Waters, Cash Daddies. Those are my podcasts. I do a, some called Doom Scrolling every Thursday at 2.30 p.m., Pacific time on my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com at Sam Tripoli. Amazing. See my dates at samtripoli.com. Live events. Nice. Amazing. 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 Uh, and by the way, I'm not married. I was just playing by, by the young oh, lady. Oh, that's not your wife? No. Okay. <laughs> just for the record. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget to go to uh, thefallestate.tv slash donate, support our work, as well as on Locals, and check out our merch and uh, light follow, ring the bell. Y'all know what to do, right? Do it. I do appreciate it. Let us hear from you. And if you have guests that you'd like to see here on thefallestate.com, let us know about it. And again, thank you for tuning in, and thank you for coming thank again, Thank you, man. brother. Absolutely. Greatly appreciate it. It was amazing. Amazing. <laughs> nice.